Today I wanted to share with you how I build a simple 3D animation rig. We're gonna use Star Wars 3D model of the AT-80 AT tank, or I think that's the way it's pronounced. We're gonna build a simple, simple rig that you're gonna be able to animate it later on. Hey guys and girls, what's up? My name is Raf and this channel is all about content creating. Content creation. Content creating, creation. Today I wanted to share with you how I build a simple 3D animation rig. We will use the software Maya. For this tutorial, it doesn't matter what version of Maya you use. You can use older version or new versions, that doesn't matter. I will use Maya 2022, but you can use whatever version of Maya you'd like. All of the tools that I'm going to use exist in the previous versions. I did this tutorial on my Hebrew channel. It was in English, but the sound wasn't so good, so I want to do a remake for this tutorial. So let's stop wasting precious time. Let's open Maya and start to build a rig. So the first thing you're gonna see is this model of the ATACT tank from Star Wars. And before we start rigging, we should always make sure that the model is the latest version of the model. Check the textures that they are connected to the model if you have textures at this point and also make sure that the model is centered to the middle of the scene because it's very crucial when you're gonna mirror the joints they're going to be mirrored relative to the scene most of the time not always but most of the time this is why we always want to make sure that when we start rigging that the model is aligned to the center so if i if i look at the grid here this is my center of the scene of the whole world of in maya and we can see that the model is slightly to the left side or to the right, depends on from where you're looking at it. So we're just gonna take the model. Here is my center pivot. So basically I'm just gonna press insert. The light went off. <laughs> so basically I'm just gonna take my center pivot, pressing insert on my keyboard, and it allows me to recenter my center pivot. So I just can move it wherever I want. And when I'm gonna deselect my model and Select the, the transform mode, the center pivot is gonna be exactly where I left it. So again, insert, and we are going to place it at the bottom. I'm gonna snap it to the to its fingers, to its to the to the floor with the V button. And now, so when you select the X arrow, the X transition arrow, it becomes yellow. That means that everything I'm gonna change is gonna be only on the X value. And now so pressing X on my keyboard, holding it and holding middle mouse button, as soon as I move the mouse a bit, it just snaps my model to the grid on the X value, not on the Z. So if I'm gonna do the same thing on the Z, you see the Z is now yellow, and pressing, holding X on my keyboard and pressing the middle mouse button, it just snaps to the grid. Center aligned, that's great, but we need to freeze transformation, so we don't want all of those parameters to be offset, like, we want the X to be at zero and stay in the same place and the Z to be at zero and stay in the same place. So basically I'm just gonna pick my main group, modify, freeze transformation option box. I'm just gonna check that the translate, rotate and scale is checked and apply. So now everything is aligned and whenever I move my model, doesn't matter where, if I'm gonna zero those parameters, it's gonna move back to this original space, place, whatever. So the model is aligned, the textures are sitting on the model, everything is fine and we're ready to create our rig. So first thing, like you can just go in two different ways. You can first start creating the controllers or you can start creating the joints and then creating the controllers depending on the location of the joint. So it doesn't matter really how you do it, it depends on the model and depends on the model itself. So this model is pretty simple to, to rig, so I'm gonna start with creating the, the controllers first. So I'm gonna create only one controller, you're gonna see how I'm doing it, and we're just gonna fast forward to the others so we won't waste any time. So basically we're just gonna create a NURBS circle. Of course you have many, many uh, plugins, I'm gonna mention them in the future, that help you create controllers pretty easily, but if you wanna create them from scratch, it's pretty easy for this rig in particular, you don't, you don't need any rigging or any plugging, plugging for rigging. So I'm just gonna scale my controller about that size, and the controller I'm creating is the, let's say the most difficult controller, it's gonna be the COG, the body controller, because it's the most shaped one. I'm gonna move it up, and we wanna create some shape to it. We don't want it to be a simple circle. So I'm gonna move to control vertices and 
just scale, scale, something like that. Just create a, something, some a custom shape that we know that this is the body control. You can you can create any shape you want. It doesn't matter. It's just visual. Uh, something like this. Okay. So we have a controller, but usually when I work, I want to work very organized and I give each controller a name, a group, a null group and a color. So let's start with the null group. We just create the controller. We're going to freeze transformations. So we don't want those parameters be also changed. We want them to be zeroed. Again, modify, freeze transform. Everything is zeroed. We're going to clean history, delete all by type. History, or you can just press Alt Shift D, and we have a killing controller. Also, we're gonna give it a name, so we'll name it COG. And as I said, I'm always using nulls for each controller because if I want to move the controller later on to another location, I don't want it to get transformations. I just want to move the null. So just create a group. So you pick up the controller, Control G, and it creates a group for the controller with the same center pivot. And I'm just gonna call it null COG. So basically we have null COG and COG. That's simple. Every controller that you're gonna create, you're gonna do it the same way for this rig. Okay, what's left is just to give it a color. So I'm gonna give it a color. I'm pressing Ctrl A to go to the attributes editor. You can select the COG or the COG shape. It doesn't matter, it depends on your workflow. And on object display, drawing overrides, enable overrides. And let's just pick like the color yellow. I usually pick yellow for the COGs and the uh, spine controls and legs, legs and arms. I usually take or red or blue depending on the side. So we created a nice controller and now I'm going to create the rest of the controllers and I'm going to fast forward this section. So as you see, I've created one leg controller. I just called it uh, FR leg, so front right leg. and. We don't need to go over the whole process again for the other controllers. We can just copy the same now, Control D, and it's gonna be like the L um, front L leg, front left leg, and also I'm gonna change the name of the controller front L leg. If you wanna duplicate the same controller exactly in the same position but only in the opposite side of it, we're just gonna group the same controller that we just created. And as you see, when I group it, it automatically creates a group and puts the center pivot exactly in the middle of our scene. This is why it was, it was important to center our model. And now I can just take the group and on the scale X, just change it to min minus one. And it just flips the controller exactly to the other side. And we can just then take the front leg extracted from the group. And of course, we need to freeze transform. And we have a controller exactly on the opposite side. We just need to change the color of it. That's it. And we have two controllers. So the back legs is just simply selecting those two controllers, the null groups, Control D duplicating them, and we can just move it back. We just need to change the names for it to be like, it's not front right, it's back right leg. Also change the name of the controller so it's back same thing to the other one okay so we have four controllers we need to create one controller for the neck and one for the head exactly the same deal so i'm just gonna fast forward this part also Okay, so I've created all of the controls. We have the head control, the neck control, COG, the center of gravity, and the legs. And this big one is the total control. Though. Like all of those controls eventually gonna go inside this one and we're gonna able to move with this main control, the whole model. So one thing before we start the joints, um, we need to, for some controllers, to set the center pivot, center position of their rotation. So if you're gonna notice the head of our model, this is his neck. This is the, the place where his head supposed to move. And the controller is here. So this is his center pivot. So eventually if I'm gonna 
create some constraint for this head, it's eventually gonna move the mesh by the controllers on the pivot and not the head. So we're gonna need to set this controller to this place. Like, so it will rotate exactly at this spot. So we can do it in several different ways. We can do it by hand, like manually, as I did before, pick the controller, like press the W to go to translate mode and press insert. And then you can just move the center pivot exactly where you want it. And if you wanna snap it to some part of its uh, of the model, you can just press V and it will snap to the vertex. So now the controller moves exactly to the rotation place we wanted. So let me show you how to connect one mesh to a controller. This only will work in this model for the head and the neck. The legs, it's a different story. We're going to work on the legs in a bit. Let's take the head controller first. Then we're selecting the mesh with shift or control, whatever. And in the constraint section, you can just like use orient constraint or parent constraint. So orient constraint is just gonna affect only the rotation. So if I'm gonna select them both, apply, whenever I just move the orientation of my control, it's gonna affect the head. If I'm gonna translate it, it's gonna move it. The head stays in the, the position because you're gonna see here the blue markers. It means that it's parented to something. There is something affecting this and it's only affecting the rotation. If you wanna affect also the translate and the rotate, you're gonna select the controller and instead of selecting orient constraint, you're gonna constrain, select the parent constraint. Make sure you have maintain offset checked, translate and rotate, or you can just pick only one of the parameters, apply, and now we can move the head. We can also translate it. And if we wanna zero everything, everything back to, to its original place, we're gonna just select all of those and press zero. So same thing to the neck. So in this model specifically, you can use the parent constraint with no problem, but there are models that you need to use only orient or only point constraint. So you need to make your judgment there. Okay, so we have the head moving, the neck moving, but we want to also make sure that when we move the neck, the head is supposed to move with the neck. But like, this is how things work. So to do so, we need to make sure that this controller is inside the group of the neck. So in the outliner, we're gonna select the null head, not the controller of the null head, this is important. And we're gonna drag it with the middle mouse button inside the neck controller, not the neck, null neck, neck controller. And basically it's gonna create this hierarchy. So we have the null neck, neck controller, null head and head. So now we are moving the head control, everything moves together. And if you wanna zero everything, everything out, we just select the both of the, those controllers and zeroing them out. And we do the same for the null neck. Let's take the null neck and drag it inside the COG controller. Okay, so obviously not, not everything moves with the COG, only, only the head and the neck because we didn't attach anything of any of those parts to the COG controller. Don't forget to press Ctrl S sometimes so you can save the project and not crash it. Okay, so now is the, the most difficult part of this. The good part is that four of those legs are exactly the same. So we can just create only one leg joint, duplicate it to the four of them and, and that's the whole deal. So we need to place joints. In order to place joints, you're just gonna go to skeleton and to go to this menu, I'm also going or every, every time, it's just pressing spacebar. So go to skeleton, create joints. And basically you want to create joints exactly at the rotation points of our model, of, our, of his joints, basically. And to create the joint exactly in the middle. So this is the trick I learned a long time ago and I'm using, using it also every time I'm just create, I'm rigging. Let's isolate those parts and it's basically just creating clusters and then creating the joints according to the cluster. So let me let me show you what I mean. We want the joint to sit exactly in the middle of this part. We're just going to go to vertex mode, create, select all of those vertexes that we're going to create our cluster in the middle of them. Go to deform and create cluster. 
So as you see, the cluster sits exactly in the middle of all of our points that we select earlier. Here we have a center vertex and we can just create a cluster from it. So I'm selecting this vertex in the middle, going to deform cluster and I have a cluster exactly where I want it. Same thing we're gonna do here. So we can just basically pick this one, pick this vertex, deform cluster and we have a cluster here. Also, we want another joint at the bottom. This is going to be the end joint. I'm selecting this part, cluster. After we've selected all of those clusters, so after we select all of those clusters in the outliner, we're going to go to isolate mode and we have four clusters. Basically, all that's left to do is just to snap the joints to the cluster. So, skeleton, create joints, and holding the V button on the keyboard, I'm just gonna click with the right, with the left mouse button on the clusters and it's gonna snap the joints exactly in my positions. One, two, three, four. And it creates the joints exactly, exactly on the clusters. Okay, and, and after we created a joint, we, we can just delete the clusters. And this is our first leg. So all we need to do now is just duplicate the same joint hierarchy to the other three legs. In order to do that, we need to create a middle joint um, somewhere here in the middle of those. We need to create a base joint, a middle joint. So I'm gonna select four of his limbs, legs, hips, how do you call it? And going again to vertex mode, I'm selecting only those middle vertices, creating a cluster again. We have a cluster exactly in the middle of our hips. And we're gonna create a joint here. So, skeleton, create joints. I'm pressing again V, clicking, and we have a joint. This is the middle joint. And we can remove the cluster. And now, to connect the leg joints, the chain to the middle joint we just created, we can just drag it again inside. And we have connected our one leg to our middle joint or middle base, whatever you call it. Now, we need to duplicate all of those joints to the other side. So selecting the first joint, not the base, only the, the first one. I'm gonna go to skeleton mirror joints and I can just press apply. And it's just gonna mirror them back. So if I, know, if I wanna mirror those joints to the other side and not to the back side, let's just change the value, the micro, micro mirror across to the YZ and not XY and press apply. Selecting this one and press apply. And now we have exactly four legs, four joints, ready to be rigged. Save. Okay, so now it's basically just connecting everything together. It's, it's the most simple part. The most difficult part was to create the joints. Let's take the base joints. Let's just give a name for it. Base joint. So the base joint is, is the joint that combines everything together. It's this one. And we, I need to connect it to our COG controllers. Selecting the joint, selecting the COG controller and, and parenting it. Or you, can, or you can just drag the joint to the COG controller. So now, as you see, whenever I move the COG, the joints move also. We want also the mesh to move with the legs. To do so, we just need to create a skinning. Skinning is just it what connects the vertices to the joint. And let's start with only one leg and I'm gonna fast forward to the other ones after we understand these vertices. Let's select this joint, the hip, let's call it. And then select the hip mesh. Go to skin, bind skin, and here on the bind skin in this exact model, in this type of rigging, you need to select only selected joints, bind to selected joints, not joint hierarchy. And the other parameters for this rig are not relevant. Let's just press apply. And now every time the joint is gonna rotate or it's gonna move, it's gonna affect the mesh. We're gonna do exactly the same to this part. So let's select the knee joint, select the knee mesh and press apply and now as you see again wherever i rotate my knee everything moves together great and this also moves together great and now only left is the last joint and then the foot let's call it apply and again everything moves together let's just leave the fingers alone for a while and we're gonna come back to them later okay so i'm just gonna do the exactly the same to all the other mesh parts. Okay, nice. So everything moves together. It's great. If gonna move this, if I'm gonna move the COG 
everything moves with the COG. And what we need to do is to connect the controllers, the leg controllers, to the joints. When I lift the controller, I want it to affect the leg. To do so, we just need to create IK handles. Go to skeleton IK handle. In order to create the IK handle, just press on the first joint on the hip base and on the knee. Let's skip the middle joint. Okay. And now we need to create another IK handle. So I'm just pressing Y to repeat the same tool. Let's select the knee and the foot. So we have two IK handles, one connecting this joint to this joint, skipping this one. It's not skipping, it's just creating a chain between those two. And we have another IK handle that connecting this joint to the foot base. So those two IK handles. And in order for the foot control to affect them, we need to take those two handles and just drag them inside the foot control. So this one. So this is what you should get. And now front leg, front leg and those two controllers. So basically now when I move the control, the leg, the leg moves with it. In some rigs, you need to create a pole vector. A pole vector is something that constrains the, the IK handle to a mesh or to a controller that you, that you choose. And it's just gonna make the IK handle always point exactly in the pole vector. In this model, we don't need it. So you're just gonna skip this part. But usually when you're creating legs or arms and you're using IK handles, you need a pole vector. Okay, so I'm going to do exactly the same thing to the other legs. And after you create IKs and you just pair them to the controllers, what you're gonna get is this thing. So basically when you're moving the torso, because you have the IK handles that's controlling the joints, the legs just gonna stay basically in, the, in place. So you see? So the only thing that moves is the main joint here, but the IKs control the legs and this is how we get the spider move or the leg moves and we just need to create base, select the base joint and skin our torso to the base joint so we already did that bind skin and if we're gonna zero out the controller it's gonna go back to place and the only thing that left here is to create the fingers so when i move this controller up I want those fingers to hang a bit. We are going to do that with driven keys. Driven keys is, is uh, something that usually used a lot in rigging. And basically it means that if you, you can select one parameter, let's say the controller, select the driver, this is the driver, this is what affects the driven keys. And we select, let's say the opposite fingers because they both share the same rotation plane and we select them as driven. So basically when I move the driver, I want the driven to be affected. So I, here I select also both of them and we are moving on the X plane. So, okay, let's make it organized. Whenever I move the controller on the Y plane, this is up, I'm selecting here transit Y. I want those two to rotate on the X, so I'm selecting rotate X, okay? Y and X. And let's make a key. Let's take the controller and move it up, let's say 15. So on the 15, I want this controller to be rotated, let's say 45 degrees down, and this one is gonna be minus 45 because it's the opposite. And let's select key again. And let's see what happens. Whenever I move my controller, it affects the rotation of those two. Let's do exactly the same to the other fingers. So load driven again, those two toes. And we already have the driver selected in the same translate Y. But here, what's different is the rotation plane. So here we rotate them on the Z plane. So those two are gonna rotate on the Z. Again, I'm gonna key everything together and now I'm gonna move this one back to 15. And this one is gonna go minus 45 on the Z plane. And this one is gonna go 45 on the Z plane and also press key. If you're not gonna press key, it's just not gonna, it's not going to register it. So. 
This is basically what we get. And we want them, of course, to be moving with the legs. So we're gonna select the fingers and we're gonna group them together. We're gonna press Ctrl G, fingers. And we want this controller to affect the fingers group. So basically we can just take the fingers and select the controller and press P on the keyboard and just gonna parent them to the controller. Just gonna move the group inside the controller. And now every time I'm moving my, head, my leg up, his leg up, you see the fingers move. But we have a small issue here. Those finger keys have ease in and ease out and we don't want them to ease in and ease out because it's gonna get the ease in and ease out transformation from the leg itself. So we're gonna go to graph editor and here we're just gonna select the keys and make them linear. So now, whenever I move my controller up and down, they just move linearly in the linear way and what is left is the last last thing and it's to connect everything to this main control so in order to do that you just start with the legs let's take the null of the legs select the control p on the keyboard and just parents them and moves them inside the controller so whenever we move the controller we have the legs moving exactly the same thing we're going to do with the cog the null cog goes inside the total transform and we have everything moving together. So those fingers are still not attached. This is why they're in place. But basically, after you attach everything, so you're good to go and start animating the, the tank or whatever you're modeling. So I hope that you liked this tutorial. It was pretty simple. I tried to speak as clearly in English as I can because there are some words that I'm used to pronounce in Hebrew and in Russian. I speak like a mix of three languages. So if you have something that you didn't understand, please write me in the comments. I'll respond as fast as I can. Don't forget to subscribe to this channel. It will help me to develop more content for you guys. And I will see you in the next video. Bye.